Great relationships don't just happen, they're designed. But how do you get the love you really want when you haven't had the models and examples you needed? We've learned the hard way that talking about stuff can change everything, but it doesn't come naturally, and that's normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the ups and downs of creating a custom-built love. We'll get personal and talk about what's worked for us, hear from Jolie about what the research can teach us about love, and answer listener questions. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about something not terribly fun, but if you can get to the root of it, definitely helpful. Um, And that is relationship sabotage. I'm thinking about this like um, relationship sabotage, like like self-sabotage. When you just continually stumble over your own feet, set yourself up for... um, not getting the things you want okay, not, right, not, over and over and over again. Um, and these patterns can be really challenging to see because it feels like <laughs> it feels like real stuff is interfering. Real oh, yeah. like there are outside influences that are the reason why we're struggling mm-hmm. to maintain our relationships. Like I don't know. It just it just keeps happening just keeps in every happening. instance of these these seemingly disconnected um, example, like these seemingly disconnected events that interrupt our relationships yep. or cause us to either stop them without even you know really looking into whether we want to reimagine the relationship or renegotiate it or to act out like our our worst possible self. Just the the self that we don't even yeah. we don't even enjoy being, but we just we decide we have to we just have to, and we get locked in a pattern of just relationally sabotaging like ourselves, playing out stories that and just committing the same habitual, um, having the same exact habits come up over and over and over again, even if they are absolutely not helping us. Okay. Even if we know they're not helping us. So working against our own Even if we've sat with our therapist <laughs> and right. talked about okay. them not helping us. Even if we've written our, you know, we, we get our journal open and we get really clear and we're like, yep, so when I feel anxious, I pull away from my partner and then my partner feels snubbed and then they pull away. So then I pull away further. Et cetera. Et cetera. Yeah, Another okay. way this could play out is... I feel anxious, so I start paying really close attention to my partner, and I'm very attentive to them. And then they start to feel a little um, confined, you know, like over observed, yeah. and that, and they start to pull away. And so now, then you pull, right. reach closer, and so a okay. pursue withdraw cycle or a withdraw with withdraw cycle. These are some words you oh, might have heard. That's nice. That's clear to me. Anyway, yeah. With so those words. withdraw, withdraw. Withdraw, withdraw. You might be familiar, might be familiar with familiar this. With that, absolutely. When have you been in a withdraw, withdraw situation? Well, um, I mean, my when things would happen in my first marriage, when like anything would be dis, would disrupt our connection. Um, so in, a minor disruption. A mi- yeah, it could be a, a very minor disruption. Just uh, minor hurt feelings. You know, nothing, nothing major. But uh, hey, hey, why did you do that thing? Except I wouldn't ask the question. I would just back off. And then she would feel me back off, and she would back off. And pretty soon, we're pretty far away from each other. Yeah. Um, I saw that, that play happen. out once. Yeah. Um, when we were friends, before there was anything romantic between us, um, I watched you. You were kind of short. You, you'd like, you kind not quite snapped, but you were, you were just kind of short in an answer to her. And I watched her withdraw and we were, we were having, um, we were having a cup of tea at the counter and she withdrew over to where I was sitting and... And then you t- definitely looked like you were feeling hurt and like you were in a snit. And you wound up in the backyard. And you were literally, literally just far apart, away. even though the thing mm-hmm. that it appeared that each of you actually wanted to get on the same page or, or reconnect. But 
the method by which you were used to acting was to withdraw. And that is, so this is just a, this is a way that some people react in it. You know, if we're looking from an attachment theory lens, then we would say, yep, so these are two folks who use avoidant strategies yeah. to try to feel safe in themselves. Okay. But it's not the only way that we can step on our own junk when we're, <laughs> when we're trying to actually have the love we want. Um, you and I have played out a pursue withdraw cycle. Right. Because I have a more anxious yep. tendency when I'm not in my my most centered and, and clear self. And so I will pursue when I feel hurt or any disconnect, I'll pursue, but that sometimes can feel a little hyper stimulating to you or you just if your feelings aren't resolved i can feel you pull away but then i pursue more and then you pull right. away and, yeah and i know there are times when i pull away as and, and i know about this sounds so stupid to say out loud but i will pull away to try to show you that you have hurt me and so i'm like i'm punishing you yeah. yeah and and i'm trying to get you to notice by like hurting you well, if that i don't even know yeah so it's a i would say that i mean maybe maybe there's trying to do that trying to hurt me but sometimes this happens in fact this happened um last weekend there was a moment when i i was not paying i was not paying any attention to you at all um, I was absorbed in my own yep. work and we had promised to come together at a certain time. I missed that time. I, I just missed the, mm -hmm. I missed the deadline. I didn't even really notice yep. it had just gone by and then you were gone. You were just gone. You were off doing something else, which is not like you at all. Right. Um, and I decided in that time, I took a different action. So a typical reaction for me would be to move into my adaptive strategy and to like to to go find go you find and try to make it better mm -hmm. and immediately assume that that pulling away that might have been to protect yourself might have been because you were feeling snippy. Who knows? I'm not sure. I'm not you. But um, I decided to just try in that moment to take any other action because I think this is this is key. We need to just take a different action, mm -hmm. not the same one that we habitually take. So I found a book and I sat down in the room you were in and read it. So I came to you so you could see, you could literally see that I was no longer absorbed in my work and, and distancing myself. But I didn't interrupt what you had gone to find yourself to do. I didn't interrupt the fact that you were playing the piano and you were just taking care of yourself possibly having pulled away with a bit of that possibly. like hey come and get me yeah. energy but i met you but i didn't meet you in a in a cloying way i didn't try to change what you were doing i came in and i brought a book and i sat in the same room and you kept playing and i appreciated that you kept playing because you needed to play until you were done and feeling settled with whatever was going on for you psychologically whatever was going on inside you and that that was helpful yeah you were you're right it's taken a lot to get to that spot because this, this, the tendency that so many of us have to get in our own way in our relationships mm -hmm. and to just keep creating the same pattern over and over again because familiar can feel more delicious than good. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Even when it's a familiar pattern of dysfunction and or isolation or, or discomfort and um yeah but familiarity humans yeah. really do love it we love a nice groove right we do the expected it's the same reason we'll watch uh, you know we'll watch the same thing over and over yeah. again we'll read the same book over and over again well i know that so it's a very small thing to just change a pattern in that small way yeah. so instead of coming and standing near you and touching you which is not wrong, would not have been necessarily a bad choice, but I wanted to interrupt my own pattern mm -hmm. of acting as though I must have hurt you and now I need to go make up for it and I need to and just come into a more neutral stance of I'm here. I'm I'm here, I'm ready. And 
there are a million ways that this could play out. I don't actually, this isn't actually about the specific unique scenario that that was. The learning moment for me in there was about just doing something different than, than what I, so I had, I had like a, a, a moment where I recognized that you had disengaged. Yep. I had a little hurt come up mm -hmm. and in in that moment, I had the option to either do what I always do or to do something even just a little bit different. Yeah. And a little bit different meant that, well, there there actually was no argument because there was nothing to argue about. But we have in the past had that sort of yep. scene turn into an argument um, because we're not really arguing with each other in that moment. No, we're not. Right? And I can kind of feel it. Like yeah. I'm arguing with people from my past. From my past. I'm yeah. arguing with my father, my first husband, friends who've left me. I'm arguing with earlier versions of me, but I'm not really arguing with you because you didn't really do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I missed a deadline. You decided to do something else. Not a problem. But it's a way that I have found to go have a fight that I want to have. Yes. Right? To go have right. to go start pulling and and get involved in my own cruddy narrative. Just the one that I play out over and over again. And a small interruption there is a big win. It is. A, like a little teensy interruption of the of the habit. Because the first thing I had to do to get to that spot was to, to suspend <laughs> the idea that I knew what your next step would be. Just to set aside. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I, I play a lot of relationship chess in my head mm -hmm. where I, I, it's, it's all very Queen's Gambit in here. <laughs> I wish my brain worked like that. It's not. Um, but when it comes to relationships, I think a lot of us do that. We imagine that we know, we know the way the whole scene will play out. And we do just so long as everybody stays in their yep. scene, everybody stays in their roles and yep. which means we have a choice right there. We have the choice to change what we're doing. And that opens us up to a new, new set of consequences, new, a new sequence of events. Yeah. So new outcomes, new outcomes, new inputs mean new outcomes. Mean new outcomes. And I don't need, I didn't need you to change first. I, it was right there yep. in front of me to just, um, do a tiny thing different and by doing something different um without feeling anything you know uh any bad feelings about it it was just new so i didn't know what was going to happen which meant i had to pay more attention oh that's interesting it was really i mean this is yeah. a, a known thing in like well the nature community it's like if you walk down the same path all the time you stop seeing what's there but all you have to do is move a little, go a slightly different way. And all of a sudden you're looking because you don't know what's there. So you pay more attention. One tiny little change. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, so what happens now? I have to think about it. I'm not just operating on autopilot. And that got me out of those habits. So people, <laughs> that's fantastic. And it resulted in a, it, it wasn't even, there, there shouldn't have ever been an argument about that. There was no need to, but a big argument could have been had, and instead, there was just a night. We just had yep. our Saturday night, and yeah. it was pleasant, and there was not there was no apology needed because no fight was started. It just it's all very simple from out here, but in there, a small change made a big difference. Yeah. And when I think about relationship sabotage, I don't think anybody sets out to sabotage themselves in a conscious way. But our unconscious patterns will just keep playing yeah. out ad nauseum. Yeah. Your unconscious patterns are, first off, they're just well-worn grooves, like those paths in the woods. Yep. Like they're, yeah, it's easier to stay on that well-worn path. But also, it's there's something comforting in having the same argument with your partner and then being right because you've already figured out like you already yeah. know how to defend yourself in yeah. that argument. Yeah. So now you can win even if you're both losing. Yeah. Cool. So uh, <laughs> maybe yeah. we could just not. But I mean, really, I spent a whole first marriage having the same fights over and over and over and over and over again. Because 
I need I I needed it. Like I needed that. My half of the fight. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't even know. You know, it's, I I haven't been married to him for a long time. I I don't know what he got out of it, but I know I was playing out a story that I desperately wanted to be different, but I never thought to change for real change what I was doing in a in a way that was you know he could respond to and so now i mean we've developed those same you know some of those same things our our habitual fights and you sidestepped one by just changing one little thing and and you did it by yourself you didn't, I didn't talk to me talk about, to about it, it because it and you didn't need to cuz no. that you just you get to choose what actions you take you took a different one and as a result and I think no that there are some people who naturally get to this spot. So there might be people listening, and maybe you've, you've bared with us this long, um, who are like, why is this even a thing? Why wouldn't you just be making peace? Like, what? why? And those folks, to the, to the natural-born peacemakers out there, I would say, yeah, it, relationship sabotage is going to look different for you. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, this has come up for you yes. in the past quite a lot not with me because i am a natural fighter um but you're a peacemaker you will eschew your own needs and wants Mm -hmm. for years so in the name of keeping peace it's not always a habitual fight sometimes it's a habitual like self-suppression like okay i'm not going to bring up anything that i have because i don't want there to be a problem today so the the lack of expressing something that I'm feeling is its own form of relationship sabotage. I'm hiding from you. So on the one hand, we have the kind of arguing or, you know, the the Gottman's research talks about, you know, the habitual fight you're going to have over and over again. You're just always going to have this fight. Um, so that's on the one hand. On the other hand, you might always have the same silence, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> the yes, same totally. repression. Exactly. The same suppression. Mm-hmm. Um when you find yourself in a spot in your relationship where you want change, I mean, I, I've I've said this before, I'll say it again, and I'm not the only one saying it. Relationships are systems. So get a hold of the one part of the system that you can impact, and that's you. And in your case, that, that silence, that yep. um, unwillingness to share your actual needs yep. and your actual self, what did it cost you? All that silence. Because you had a very peaceful home. You had an exceedingly peaceful home. Well, I don't want to overstate the case, but it it cost me myself. I didn't... I I spent... I got the habit of of not expressing what I was feeling so much that I stopped expressing expressing most of who I was. That's how it feels from here when I look back. Well, I... I mean, I think only you could know whether that's true. But it and definitely cost me intimacy with my partner. Oh, like for, I mean, right? I mean, it's kind of obvious. If so. you're not available, right? If you're, if there's, so if you were to use an image of, you know, if you're, you're a whole solar system's worth of stars and planets and all, like all this stuff. Well, not. I mean, a solar system would have just the one star. Okay, generally. Right. But, you know, <laughs> um, if you're a whole system of stuff and you only share a couple parts yeah. with someone, it becomes really challenging to have what I think of as intimacy, well, which I, is... I do too, yeah. ...sharing a, a real fullness and a depth and complexity of, of yourself. Um when that was what was going on for you, were you were you building a rich inner world for yourself? Was were were you still were you inside and doing more introverted activities of a generative nature, or were you shutting down? Um, in general, uh, I think I was shutting down more than doing the um, introverted generative world building but i i i I, I did both but the the balance swings in favor of um shutting down so you asked me a while ago on a different episode about numbing yeah 
And that's what it brings to mind. Uh -huh. One way we can so sabotage in our relationships is to, and it's so funny, um, <laughs> it's all self-sabotage and it's all relationship sabotage. It's both. Yeah, it's both. Um, one way we can sabotage is to numb so habitually, so much that we're not really even, we're barely even awake. Yep. We're barely even, barely even present present to life. Yep. And I remember you, um, one of the first times I saw you really, really weep, really cry um, after we'd started having, actually, no, it's one of the first times I saw you really weep ever. It's before we had any kind of physical relationship. We were not romantic. Um, I told you that you would hurt someone's feelings. I told you that you like that, that that just as a friend, I was like, hey, like this is a problem. Yeah. And it's like it shook something loose in you. And from here I'm like, oh, because you had frozen up so much of you. You were numbing so much of the time that just being told, hey, um, you hurt somebody. Do you, I think you could do something about that. Which you did, and you repaired very well. You you did a good job of coming back into relation in that moment, but I saw a real thawing of a lot of emotion and a lot of you, a you who I'd known at that point for 40 years and yeah. I barely knew had existed. Well, I guess I'd known you for 30 years because that's how old I was. Right. But um, I didn't realize, I think until right now, how numb you were most of the time I knew you. Yeah. Um, that, I thought that... you were just cold. Nope, I'm not cold. <laughs> but you weren't cold. No, I was just numb. And that numbness looked also like um, a certain amount of disconnection and sort of absent-minded professorness, mm -hmm. like a little um, aloofness, yes, but also like a um, distracted... Um, so... But really numbing. Yep. Numbing and yourself. I think that started out as... And self-sabotage sounds like this, this unconscious desire to mess stuff up or unconscious desire to be doing a particular thing. And I think what you're describing started off as a protective I think it always starts off measure. as a protective measure. And I guess it would, right? And then, um, and that turned into self-sabotage. There were so many steps I didn't take because I had numbed myself. And then I got into a relationship, so those behaviors just became part of how I how I showed up in that relationship and now it's and now it's relationship sabotage yeah. now it's affecting the relationship right yeah this is this is tough stuff and it's big and I feel like this conversation um, may have been one of our more muddled ones in a way I think this is really it's deep and, and personal for everyone yeah. you're going to be showing up in your relationship um, you know, as best you can. I really do think people are showing up as best as they, they, they can yeah. from an unconscious place in order to bring consciousness to it. In order, in order to, to do the next thing, you're going to have to pay attention to the stuff that you don't really want to look at. Right. Because that, that stuff that's right in the peripheral of your vision. Like for you, there was a lot of desire and want that you were not allowing that yourself I wasn't to, look allowing at. to look at yep but it also meant that you couldn't bring that to your partner you couldn't share right. so you had a person a person you cared about but you the two of you weren't sharing yep. so you couldn't really know each other so i don't even know whether you would have had a good relationship together yeah, right? from an intimate it, it, it perspective can't Who could tell say? from here I don't because know. we never really tried we never really took those steps. And um, in my first marriage, I would say that there was a, a pattern of needing to act out emotion, act it mm -hmm. out rather than suppress it. Um, and he would sort of provoke it. I would act it out. And then we'd just cycle around with this good guy, bad guy, chasing each other around a kitchen counter, basically. Just. And what I needed to look at was in the periphery. It was in yeah. the, is this how I want to be behaving? No? Then why am I doing this with the person I love the most? Right. Yep. And that's the that's the thing that I think I've, I've navigated better with you and better with some of my other relationships recently, which is 
Am I showing up as I actually want to? Because then, even if the relationship doesn't go the way I want it to, I can feel okay about myself. I can feel okay about how I showed up. And therefore, Mm -hmm. even if I'm rejected or I can't get what I want or my partner doesn't want what I want, whatever it is, if I showed up authentically, you know you have... I can live with myself. You can live with yourself. You know you've done the things that you have control over and and feel like you I can be at yourself. peace with being like it's okay for somebody to not want me but what a bummer to find out that I didn't even find out if they did yeah I um yep right because I because I I hid and changed and 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 danced around all these things now I don't even know if they wanted me yeah right very confusing stuff so I think this is a big topic that um is is so nuanced and we could approach it from other ways. And um, it's inspiring me to put um, an episode together on attachment specifically and dig more into that. Attachment theory is only one theory. I know right now it's kind of top of mind for a lot of people. It gets a fair amount of attention and it is a useful lens to look through. Um, I think that there's some care that we can show around it as well because no theory is without its flaws and its downsides. Um, so, but I think we could revisit this issue yeah. from that angle. And uh, this I wanna, was really cool. This was really cool. And I want to bring back what, what you said, that in these situations, look for the opportunities to do something a little different. Just yep. that. Just that. And um, A simple, yeah. small change is essentially an experiment, a relationship experiment yes. from your side. Give it See a try. See what happens. Mm-hmm. And... I'm game to hear from anybody oh, who's who's doing this experimenting, who's taking this in and saying, yeah, I'm going to try something and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but at least I'll know that I'm actively participating in my right. own relational capacity. Yes. So Lovely. feel free to reach out to me. You can always find me on my website at joliehamilton.com. And right. until next time. Keep talking to each other. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode. I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you, and that you're just going to need to hop over to the website listentojolie.com. There you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Go get those guides. They're great. They're easy to implement conversations that will help you take action in creating the love you really want. It's my mission to make absolutely everything talk aboutable. She managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my my lovers, my friends, my family, and you um, on a podcast. Out loud relationship work really can change everything. That really is a wonder. One of my favorite things in the whole world. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way that you'd hoped in your relationships, I want you to remember that relationships can be messy and that's good news.